I baptize thee having authority from the almighty God as a testimony that you have entered into a covenant to serve him I have need to be baptized of thee. Come and start to me. Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. I baptize thee having authority from the Almighty God, as a testimony that ye have entered into a covenant to serve him, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased.
Good morning. And welcome to everyone here and everyone joining us online. Um, this morning, I am glad to, in addition to my mom, who I'm always glad to have with me, I'm glad to have my husband with me today as well. So for anybody who hasn't met him yet, that's him there. <laughs> He is uh, in between calls. Last Sunday was his last Sunday at his churches, and then he will be starting his new call at Perry Highway Lutheran Church in Wexford in February. So he has a, a, a little bit of a break in between, and I'm glad he decided to come today. So um, During our service this morning, during the Thanksgiving, uh, at the end of the Thanksgiving for baptism, I will be... Uh, sprinkling you all with some water. So just be prepared for that. You'll get wet. Not like soaking wet, but a little bit wet. <laughs> and those at home, if you want to, you know, splash some water on yourself, go for it. <laughs> I think that's it for my announcements, so I know we have some others, Royce. Good morning, everyone. Um, I do have a piece of paper. Don't be misled. This doesn't mean I like to talk. That's not true. <laughs> you keep your comment to yourself, your opinion to yourself. The first announcement is um, SWAT analysis, and SWAT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threat. This is um, an event that we'll be having on Saturday, uh, January. January 21st at 3 p.m. There is a sign-up sheet out in front to uh, sign up for that. This is supposed to be designed to be a, a fun, social, and interactive exercise that is to generate enthusiasm and develop and um, stimulate ideas that will um, direct us, guide us as we continue to move forward and grow. So we hope that all of you can uh, participate and bring your ideas with us. As an added benefit, we will have um, dinner afterwards. Pastor Mike will be um, leading this exercise and um, he has lobbied for um, steak and lobster tail. I don't know whether we'll get that far, but I can guarantee you that your stomachs will be well fed. So, uh, <laughs> so, he uh, will be leading that exercise. I'm going to ask a couple council members if they want to add to that event. It's not, 
We're going to do this on Saturday. Okay, we're done. This is like future. This is where we're taking the congregation, we're taking the church, and uh, so that's what that's nice. I know. Uh, when I spoke to my daughters about it, all ages are welcome, and they were excited to have their input and um, join in with the um, input that we have. And they're they're excited to, you know, look at the questions that we're asking and then um, provide their feedback so that we can all come together uh, and move forward. Yeah, don't think of it as this is where the council is taking the congregation. Think of it as this is my chance to contribute to where we're going so that it becomes this is where the congregation is taking itself. Thank you. So that was well said, and you see that they like to talk and not me. I have a couple more announcements about the future of the church. How cool is this? Okay. So I like to talk, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tuesday, we are starting up our cricketeers group again, and something really neat is happening. We are not just going to be teaching cricket. Well, I, that's, my, that's my area of expertise. But one of the members of our congregation said, I like to do count a cross stitch, and I just sit at home by myself and do it. Can I come and join you? Absolutely. And then I mentioned something at a meeting the other night. We had some crocheters come forward and say, oh my gosh, I would love to come and crochet. So the Cricketeers group is now officially open to anybody who wants to bring a craft and just hang out with some Gabby well, it's all, mostly women at this point, but men, you're welcome too if, if there's something you enjoy doing. Um, it's a lot of fun. We make some neat projects. We have good conversation. We do a lot of brainstorming about the future of Rehoboth. So this Tuesday, 6.30, we usually wrap up around 8.30 or 9, depending on where you are in a, at a stopping point in your project. So join us. My second announcement Next Sunday, January 15th, we are beginning Rejoicing Rascals practices again. So, how exciting. This is open for youth in our entire parish, first grade through high school. We are going to be doing Fired Up. It's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that was put on hold because of COVID three years ago. And I'm up to 16 or 17 participants for sure at this point, hoping to get a few more. Um, but if you're watching this online, please contact me um, if you want more information. Next Sunday, January 15th, practice will be here at Rehoboth from 5 to 7. There will be a parent meeting before we start, and then I'll practice with the kids. Thank you. Thank you for that. There's a lot of excitement going on, so we hope you can all join. That includes those who are visiting us online. Uh, my second announcement is regarding the uh, Christmas tree burning event that we had last evening. It was our first annual one, annual event, and it was a, uh, a blazing and flameful event. We had three trees, live trees to burn, and um, we had uh, some... Uh, cookies and warm beverages to follow so it was a great evening and it's going to be an annual event and we've already scheduled uh, the event for next year which will be the second annual event and that will be actually on the day of epiphany which will be on saturday january 6th at 4 30 p.m so please mark your calendars now and get that on there so that you can attend um, and we would look forward to seeing all of you um, my last announcement is that we will have our annual congregational meeting on Sunday, January 29th, here, and uh, dinner will prov be provided also. Um, those of you who are chairpersons of committees, I ask very kindly that you get your committee reports in by next Sunday, which is January 15th, so Roseanne can compile the annual report. So that's all for my announcement. Thank you. Sounds like two chances for a free meal to me. So I mean, come on. <laughs> Please stand as you are able. Everything old has passed away. Everything.
waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, the son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in the book of Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. Here is my servant, who I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Pray Psalm 29 responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory of thunders. The Lord of the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. God makes Lebanon skip the calf and serving like a dumb wild fox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to swirl and scripts the forest bare. And in God's temple will cry glory. The Lord sits a throne over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to the people. The Lord bless your people with peace. Amen. The epistle lesson is written in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 34th verse. Then Peter began to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people 
and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Hallelujah! I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Christ, God has shown us the divine light. Hallelujah! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I love being part of a baptism. I mean, we all love baptisms, right? Babies are beautiful. Their families are so proud to be part of an important occasion. Now, most often, of course, in the Lutheran Church, where we are baptizing babies, but we also have baptisms of older children and adults, and those are equally as exciting and beautiful. But baptism isn't something we do because it's what we are supposed to do even though that's why some families do it. <laughs> Baptism is about so much more. It's about being part of the body of Christ and knowing that there is a community of people to surround and support and encourage us. It's about making promises to grow in faith and to serve God and our neighbor, to do God's work on this earth. And it's about reminding ourselves that we are not in control. The thanksgiving for baptism that we use today and at other occasions in the church year acknowledges that our identity in Christ is the foundation of our gathering. It uses the words and stories of scripture to remind us of God's acts and of the holiness of water. The saving grace of God spoken of here is freely available to all. And through this part of our service, we give thanks for God's actions to save us through water and the word, praying that our present assembly will be renewed by the Holy Spirit in forgiveness, grace, and love. This thanksgiving for baptism is an alternative to the order for confession and forgiveness that we use most often. This also, though, is considered a return to the gift of baptism. The mercy of God in baptism made us one people in Christ, an assembly gathered to proclaim God's saving deeds and to care for our neighbors in service and love. The forgiveness of our sins restores us to this vocation. Our act of confession and worship is communal. Together we confess our sins. Together, by God's mercy, we are restored to being the body of Christ as we gather here in word and sacrament and then as we go out into the world. In today's gospel reading from Matthew, and the part before what we read today, John has been baptizing a lot of people and calling for repentance. 
And he tells them about this one who is coming. But Jesus didn't come as a mighty warrior king as the people expected. He came as a humble servant. He came, as we recently celebrated, as a baby in a manger, born to an ordinary family. And he came to be baptized by John, even though John feels unworthy and instead wishes he could be baptized by Jesus. We experience God's love and forgiveness daily, even though, like John, we might at times feel unworthy. But God has redeemed us through the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. We celebrate this every time we gather together to worship, every time we share in Christ's body and blood at the table, every time someone is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We remember and celebrate these things each time we worship, but especially today as we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Because we are baptized because Jesus was baptized. And because Jesus then told the disciples to go and baptize. God's spirit is within us, and this is a spirit calling us to serve as Jesus served. I've been reading uh, this book called Wholehearted Faith by Rachel Held Evans, and I read a part just last night about baptism, actually, and even though my sermon was already, I thought, complete, I wanted to share part of what she says with you. First and foremost, we are beloved children of God, blessed by layer upon layer of love. Whenever my, wherever my children's faith and lives may take them, even if it's away from the tradition in which we are raising them, they will know that the act of baptism took place because they were, perhaps clumsily and undoubtedly imperfectly, loved. It was one way in which we as parents said to our children, you are my child in whom I am well pleased. It was one way in which we as parents recognized that God has said and we hope will say of us, you are my child, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Baptism, like communion and confession and the creeds, reminds us that we cannot be Christians on our own. We belong to a community even larger than the one gathered around rickety folding tables in the fellowship hall, weighed down with jello and deviled eggs. It's a family of faith bound together by the same Holy Spirit through whom Christ was conceived, and the same Holy Spirit who descended from the heavens like a dove. As baptized children of God, we promise to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Baptism is an act of the Holy Spirit that is done to us, which then empowers us to act on behalf of others whom God loves. Baptism is not just about who we are and whose we are, but also about who others need us to be to be present with them in the wilderness, to tell them of God's words from heaven. After his baptism, when Jesus was sent out into the wilderness, he was not alone. He had the spirit and the promise of God's declaration. And we too are never in the wilderness alone because all of us together are God's beloved children. And even though our baptism ceremony happens once, the effects of our baptism are felt daily and last forever. We daily die and rise to new life in Christ. We are blessed through grace with a new beginning each day and new opportunities each day to share the message of God's love with others, to minister to others as Jesus did a ministry which began with baptism.
Amen. God has made us a holy people through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Created in God's image, formed for God's glory, called by God's name, washed in baptismal waters and called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith, and equip all the baptized of our parish and those of Good Shepherd, Mount Pleasant, Stewart Avenue, Carrick, and Grace, Rochester, for your reconciling and redeeming work. Merciful God, yes, you are. righteous God, you never weary 
of establishing justice, guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity, and to work to increase cooperation and construct dialogue among differing factions. We pray for those in military service, for peacemakers, for our enemies, and for the United Nations. Merciful God, renewing God, you have provided all the waters of earth and in Jesus' baptism you sanctify those living, giving, life-giving waters, purifying creation. Cleanse and protect oceans, rivers, and watersheds and bring relief to parched lands and to communities without access to safe water. Merciful God, Abiding God, your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who must flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine, and strength to those who stay to resolve it, especially in the Ukraine, Iran, and Peru. Sustain health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal and send comfort to those who are grieving or experience crisis. We pray especially for these we name aloud or in our hearts. Merciful God, through prayer. Promising God, your faithfulness endures throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ trusting that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Merciful God, we bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The eternal word comes to reveal God's heart to the nations. Receive him with joy.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. May the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you.